Hey everyone, I'm Robin and this is BitBirdie. Today I'm going to show you how to create a hurt box that you can put on your character and when it gets hurt, it'll flash white for an instant and then become invincible for some amount of time. This tutorial is sort of based off the hurt box implementation in a tutorial series by HeartBeast, which I'll have linked in the description below. Definitely check it out if you're learning Godot, it's honestly one of the best resources out there. Alright, we're going to start off in a project where there's a player and an enemy. The enemy can shoot bullets and I can move the player around, but right now nothing happens when the bullets hit the player. We're going to start off by going into the player scene and creating a shader for the player's texture to turn it white when the bullet hits it. So let's create a shader material and a shader for that. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail about how shaders work because that deserves a whole video on its own and there's plenty on YouTube already. But basically what's going to happen here is the fragment function is going to run for every pixel on the player's texture. And this uniform bool whiten will be able to change this from a different script. So when the player gets hit by a bullet, we'll be able to change this whiten to true and turn the player white. So here I'm just storing the texture's color at this pixel in this variable. And when whiten is true, we're going to change the color of that pixel to a color between its color and pure white. So here I'm storing a vector3 representation of the color white in this variable called white. And then I'm calling this function called mix, which linearly interpolates between this vector and this vector by this value. So what we're doing here is getting the texture color.rgb and leaving out the a for now and the color white. And we're getting a value that is a little bit higher than halfway between these two and storing that in white and texture RGB. Okay, so I just realized that we're actually putting this shader on the wrong object. <laughs> we're putting it on this player node, but we're supposed to be putting on the sprite. So let's just copy this and then clear this shader, clear this material, go into the sprite and do the same thing here. I'm just going to paste the shader. Okay, so what's going on here? Why do we have this white box all of a sudden after I added this line? Color is a special property where if you assign a vector 4 to it, it's going to basically set the color of that pixel to, to color. So since we're accessing this property, Godot is expecting us to set color manually. It's no longer going to just set it to texture color automatically. So even though whiten is false right now, and this is not actually getting run, we still need to manually set color to something or else we'll just get this white box. Yep, so we just took the texture color that we had from before and assigned that to color. And now that we sorted that out, we can actually talk about what is going on in this line. We're basically taking our whitened texture RGB, the value that it's in between the texture color and white, and we're assigning that to color here, which will set that color to the pixel. We're also getting the texture colors alpha and putting it here so that it's unmodified by all this mix business. The reason we want to do that is because we don't want to affect the alpha at all. We want the texture to have an alpha of zero where the background is and an alpha of one where the player is. So let's see what happens when we set whiten to true. See, we get the player's texture and it's sort of halfway in between the normal color and white. Let's create our hurt box scene now. Okay, so hurt box is an area 2D with a collision shape 2D as a child. Let's go ahead and create a script. All right, so we have a whiten duration, which is the amount of time that the player is going to be white when it gets hit. So just 0.15 seconds. And we have this exported variable, which is a shader material called whiten material. So when we put the hurt box scene onto the player, we're going to assign the player's sprites shader material into this exported variable. Next, we're going to connect the hurt box's signal, this area entered signal to itself. So when something enters the hurt box, we're going to take the whiten material and set whiten to true. And whiten was that uniform bool in our shader that determines whether to make the character white. So what yield does is it will stop function execution on this line. And then we're going to quickly create a timer with this whiten duration. And when the timer times out, function execution will resume. This is a really handy way to put a delay in the middle of a function. So after that delay, we want to turn whiten to false. So whiten will only be true for 0.15 seconds. Now let's go ahead and connect our hurt box to our player. We need to actually edit the collider on our hurt box. So let's go to edit both children. 
and assign a capsule shape 2D. So this is going to be the hearth box. So we'll make it um, not too big, to just to be a bit nicer to the player. That's probably fine. And let's connect the hearth box's signal to the player script. For now, we're just going to print ouch when something enters the hurt box. And that reminds me, we should actually set the collision layers on the hurt box. So I already have some layers set here for the player bullet and the enemy. This layer is going to be the layer that the hurt box is part of. So we're actually going to set that to nothing. And the layers that the hurt box is looking for uh, would be the bullet. So this will only be triggered when a bullet enters the hurt box. Let's try that out now. Well, uh, non-existent function set shader param. Ah, okay. So we've forgotten to actually assign this white material. So we see it right there. We're just gonna load. We also haven't saved our shader and material as a resource, so let's save this. Um, we'll save this as whiten material. And then we also want to save the shader as well. Uh, oh, it's telling us to make it unique first. Okay, and we'll call this whiten shader. Now that we have those saved, we can go into our hurt box and assign the whitened material. Let's try that again. Awesome. So every time we get hit, ouch is printed and we're flashing white. Okay, let's move on to the blinking invincibility effect. So let's create a scene for our blinker. So this is going to be the amount of time of each blink. So we'll set this to something really short, like 0.1. And this is going to be the, the total duration of the blink effect. We're going to set this in code though. Let's rename this to blinker and give it a script. Okay, so I'm just storing our two timers here and also this thing called blink object, which is what we're going to make blink. So this is going to be a function that other scripts can call with an object, which will become the blink object and the duration, which will assign to duration timer. When the player is hit by a bullet, we're going to have the player call this function and pass in itself to be the blinking object and some duration. So this is what's going to happen. We assign the object to blink object. We're going to set the duration of the duration timer and we're going to start both timers. So let's connect the timeout signal of these timers. Every time the blink timer times out, we're going to want to toggle the visibility of our blink object. When the duration timer times out, we're going to want to stop blinking. So stop the blink timer and make sure that the blink object is visible. This is all we need for the blinker. So let's go ahead and put that on our player. I guess I've already added the hurt box blinker as on ready bears here. I just added this invisibility duration. So we're going to be blinking and invisible for 1.5 seconds. Okay, when the hurt box is entered, we're gonna take our blinker and call start blinking, passing in self and the invisibility duration. Okay, so we're getting hit, but we're not invincible yet, even though we're blinking, because you can see every time we get hit by a bullet, it prints ouch. Okay, let's implement the invincibility part of this. So we're in the hurt box now, and I've added a reference to the collision shape, and I've added this function called start invincibility, which the player will call when it gets hit. So this looks pretty familiar. It's almost like this function right here. So what we're going to do is turn off the collider. We're going to wait a little bit. In this case, wait for this long, the invincibility duration, and then we're going to turn on the collider again. So when the player gets hit while it's invincible, then the collider will be off and the hurt box's signals will not be sent. So what this is really doing is going into the collider oops, and it's going to check this on for true to disable it. And it's going to do that at the end of the physics step. 
So this set deferred basically means to wait until all the other physics calculations are done before doing this. Okay, let's hook this up in the player. Now we just have to go hurt box and call start invincibility with the invincibility duration. Let's try it out. Okay, so you can see that ouch is not being called for every bullet, which means that I'm actually getting invincible for 1.5 seconds. Okay, so this is cool, but there's still one problem. Let's see what happens if we go into the bullet and change its speed to something slower. So do you see that every time I get hurt now, there are two ouches? So I'm actually getting damaged twice as much as I should be getting damaged. And that's because now that the bullets are a lot closer together, the hurt box's area entered signal is actually being sent twice. So how do we fix that? This is the quickest way I found to fix this. We have this extra variable called is invincible and we just basically set that as soon as we turn invincible. In the player, we can check if hurtbox is invincible and if it is, or if it's not rather, then we get damaged and we start the blinker and all that. So you might be thinking, why do we need this extra variable? Couldn't we just check the collision shape and check to see if it's disabled? Well, we can't because the set deferred will only set disabled at the end of the frame. That's actually why we're getting those two ouches. One bullet will trigger the start invincibility and set, set deferred disabled true. But before the end of the physics frame, a second bullet is actually triggering the same thing. And this is all getting called twice. This is why we need to use our own variable, which we can change immediately as soon as one bullet hits the player. So let's see if that worked. Yeah. So there's only one ouch at a time, if that makes sense. As soon as one bullet enters the hurt box, the hurt box becomes invincible and the second bullet that's already in it will not trigger it again. What's really cool about the hurt box is that you can actually just put it on any other object. It doesn't have to be your player and it'll work. So let's put it on our enemy. We need to give our enemy sprite the same whitened material that we gave our player. And then we can also load it into the hurt box. We also need to adjust the collision on here. Make this also make the hurt box react to the bullet only. So now we're going to go into the main scene and how we'll show this is because the player can't shoot any bullets, we'll just have another enemy shooting bullets at the other one. So we'll do this. Um, let's give that a try. Oh, uh, I forgot to actually give this collision shape 2D um, a shape. Editable children. We'll make it that big. Sure. Okay, so what's happening here? Uh, right now, this shader material is actually getting shared between everything that's using it. So to fix that, we can go into here and Oh, here it is, local to scene. So here you just have to check this on and it should work now. Yeah. So now the resource is no longer being shared between everything that's using it. It's only local to the scene. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now that you have this hit effect, your next step might be to add some kind of little explosion animation or particle effect in the spot where your character gets hit. And then you can add some audio and screen shake to really get your players to feel the attack. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more tutorials, and also for devlogs about my own game that I'm working on. And if you have any suggestions for tutorials you want to see, feel free to leave a comment below or tell me on Twitter if that's more your style. See you next time.